Okay, welcome everybody. For those of you who do not know, I'm Carol Morgan, manager of this museum. Uh, uh, this is History at High Noon. We do this the fourth Wednesday of every month, except for November and December. Different topic each month. And somebody said, well, we'll be out here in an hour. I said, well, yeah, we'll be out here in an hour, won't we? <laughs> we um, I was raised in the church where they stayed forever, so I like to get out when I possibly can. I've got a lot of little things, housekeeping things, I want to share with you and the people that watch us on YouTube. So if you'll just bear with me a few minutes. I made a list. We have two new exhibits up. The first one is at the front, and it's now we're found, but still unknown. We have accumulated over the last four years about 5,000 pictures. The problem is 4,990 of them nobody knows. So this exhibit we've got up in the front and over here on the side is people that we don't know who they are. They either have a letter or a number by their picture, and you can get a piece of paper, and if you know somebody, Andy Pat gave me some names this morning, thank you. Uh, we need to know who these are, because it's a sad thing to me when you've got baby pictures and family pictures and nobody even knows who they are. I, I can't stand it. And this way, if we find out their names, Mary and Mizell has more to find. <laughs> also, behind uh, Linda, and we're in front of me, is Coffee Brew's friends. Linda Cribs and her gang, and I use that word sweetly, uh, did this exhibit, and I think it is so much fun to see the closeness and the groups, and the title just fits so well because we have a lot of groups that gather in Coffee County and have for years and will till we die. So, and that's what makes this community strong to me is the friendships and the connections. Coffee Brews Friends is the title. Did I do it wrong? No, you just didn't say it. I thought I did it. Coffee <laughs> Brews Friends. She's correcting me, it's all right. The Historical Society newsletter goes out at the end of this month. Got a lot of news in it. We'll be closed the weekend of 4th of July. July 24th is our next date for History at High Noon. And it's on the City Improvement Club. Now you folks that are old time inhabitants of Douglas and Coffee County know that better as the Douglas Woman's Club. The City Improvement Club came about when the women whose husbands ran the city decided changes needed to be made. And they made a lot of changes during their tenure. Be interesting. We have the Memory Project. I know you saw in the paper where we have Nabil and Bryce here working this summer. We've scanned annuals from Carver and Coffee High. We're looking for Broxton and Nichols and Ambrose and West Green. But nobody has volunteered to bring us any of those yet, no matter what we put out as feelers. But uh, the memory project's going great guns. Dr. Wayne Clough and Georgia Tech are behind us. We will be producing an interactive website where you can go and hear interviews and reactions and that kind of thing. And they're also, since this is the 50th year of integration coming up, we are interviewing students now so they can compare what it was like 50 years ago to what it's like <coughs> now. It's an exciting project. <coughs> I had an hour and a half and didn't have anything to do, so I signed the Historical Society up for another project. <laughs> the name of this is Gems of Coffee County, G not G-Y-M-S. You know me better than that. It's G-E-M-S. These are gems of our county that sometime go unnoticed. And we're going to publish a book. See, I told you. We got two years from this August to get it finished. I would love to have a lot of volunteers to get pictures and documentation. Uh, Denise Leverett Polk has already gotten me the Christian Church and Ambrose picture and the information, and she just heard Joanne talking about it. So, It'll come in, I think. We want to document these places, like the Meeks House in Nichols, the um, Tanner Church, just different older places, historical gems as it is. 
and we're going to do a book on that. So if you'd like to volunteer for that, give us a call. We did receive the history of the Camorra in Utah, Latter-day Saints Church, and I was real impressed with the research the guy had done. And it's here in case somebody wants to come and read about it. <sighs> Another project. October 4th and 5th at Douglas City Cemetery, we will once again do the walk through the neighborhood. How many of you have never been? Everybody's been? Okay. Well, Jim helped us last year. He was our, um, he was our lone male last year, wasn't he? We have four signed up to portray right now. I'd like to have at least two more. I'd like to have a man involved, if I possibly could, trying to talk to Ethan Craig. He teaches history in Fitzgerald and see if he will participate. But it is October the 4th at 6 and October the 5th at 10 a.m. And the tickets will be $10, and you'll get more information on that as it's closer. We are reworking the museum. Like I have been doing that since day one. But this is a total venue change. When you come in now, it's kind of like a hodgepodge and there's no flow. So we're changing things so when you enter, the first exhibit will be Native Americans, then Pioneers, and it will go forth like that. We've already changed the Civil War exhibit somewhat. And we'll be doing some other things. So you'll see a mess occasionally. Just forgive us. Uh, Lee Mobley's coming in to paint some backdrops in some of the display cases and do a mural on one of the window covers. We've just got a lot of little interesting changes going on. Um, next time I'm talking about all this, at the same time, we need money. So if you're not a member of the Historical Society, you folks at home, that watch us on YouTube all the time and talk about how great it is. Uh, membership's only $25. Now you can get, have a membership for $200, but all I ask people is $25. I'm not a blood sucker. I just want money. Uh, to help us get this project done, because everything you do, donation-wise and membership-wise, for the next 12 months will go towards the memory project or the revamping of the museum everything. So whatever we get in the next 12 months, it will be to fund that. And believe it or not, that's it. <laughs> Today our guest is someone I've known, I don't remember not knowing her, I'm sure there was a time when I didn't, but I don't remember it. Uh, her mother didn't teach me, but I knew her mother through retired educators for years, sweet lady. And her daddy taught me twice. We were in the same course. <laughs> Our guest speaker today is going to do the history of the DAR, especially in Coffee County, Linda Bradley Smith. Enjoy genealogy. 
I enjoyed listening to history, I just didn't want to be tested on it. Yeah. Uh, so mine was in accounting. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And now I'm retired and enjoying grandchildren and traveling and things like that. Way before I retired, uh, my mother came to me and asked me would I join DAR. There were a group of ladies from Douglas who were part of the um, John Floyd chapter out of Homerville. And I think they served three or four counties at that time in this area. And there were several ladies, and they decided, well, we all live in Douglas. Let's start one in Douglas. So they did. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little more about that later. At the time, I think it was 1986, I said, sure, I'll be glad to attend the meetings, but I've got three children, one of them two years old, and I'm teaching full time. Please don't ask me to be an officer. <laughs> and they did wait for a while. Uh, the DAR has been around for a long time. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. We just normally refer to it as DAR. And sometimes when you have just those initials on, they'll say, Daughter, what's Daughter? And you know, <laughs> Daughters of the American Revolution. It was founded in 1890, headquartered in Washington, D.C. It's nonprofit, nonpolitical volunteer women's service organization. I know somebody not too long ago said, you know, you people in the DAR, you ladies in the DAR ought to get on top of this political thing. It's like, no, that's not our purpose. Our purpose is promoting patriotism. And we definitely need that at this time too. Preserving American history and all these different buildings that have were um, used over the years by people who from the American Revolution, that time, era. Um, and then, of course, working to secure America's future through better education for our children. So we do quite a few things with the children. And I'll talk about each of these things as we go through. GAR members, like I said, is a service organization. And they, therefore, they work a lot in their communities. And when you, most of the stuff is really done, the activities are done at a local level. But when you put all these local levels together in all 50 states, and then also international units, you get a lot done, a lot of good things done. We have just millions of service hours. In the last few years, they've been trying to get people to record what they do out in the community whether it's going like some of our group does to the nursing home and painting fingernails for people, going out in the hospital volunteering, helping with uh, literacy, illiteracy programs, or literacy programs, I guess it would be, um, all sorts of things, helping with the veterans, going to the hospitals, collecting things for them. So thousands of dollars are raised when you look at the whole country involved, all of the DAR. We have scholarships, financial aid out there to help students. And of course, you have to apply for anything just like everywhere else. We have several schools that were started to help um, children who couldn't even get to a school. We have at least three schools um, that were mountain areas. Our own Berry College was started by Martha Berry, who was a DAR member. And it was a little kind of mountainous community, rural community, where kids didn't have a way to get a good education. So a lot of these were started that way. We are one of the most inclusive, not exclusive, but inclusive genealogical societies in the country. DAR boasts 185,000 members and 3,000 chapters across the United States and international, internationally. We have, uh, I think, over 7,000 members in Georgia now. So it's, it's a lot of people working for the good of others. Any woman 18 years or older, regardless of their race, religion, ethnic background, they can, if they can prove lineal descent from a patriot of the American Revolution, then they are eligible for membership. And it's not just the people who fought in the war, 
but the people, the merchants who supported them, or doctors, or you know anybody who gave some support to the um, American Revolution, to the Patriots. If you've been to Washington, D.C., you've probably seen the DAR National Headquarters. It takes up an entire downtown city block. There are three buildings, and it has one of the nation's premier genealogical libraries. And anybody can use it. You are charged for some things, obviously, just like anywhere else, but you are welcome to use it. And a lot of things now are online, so it makes it a lot easier to use. We have one of the foremost collections of pre-industrial American decorative arts in the museum there. We have the Washington's largest concert hall and an extensive collection of early American manuscripts and imprints. So this is what they call the Americana Room, and you can just go through and look at some of these really valuable, old, obviously, uh, prints. We are tax exempt. And like I said, the main thing we're looking at, we're trying to do, historic preservation, education, and patriotism. Not only under historical preservation do we think about maintaining uh, historical sites, but also records, artifacts, documents, revolutionary war patriot grave sites and headstones. We try to restore them, mark them. And if we don't have one here, then when other chapters do things like that, we try to support them. Education. Like I mentioned, we have schools. There are six schools that we support that are uh, DAR supported almost totally. Now, some of them have other avenues of funding, but they usually um, refer to themselves too as DAR schools. We have one in Grant, Alabama, Kate Duncan Smith DAR school on top of the map. We have one in uh, Tomasi, South Carolina. Massey DAR School, and then Cross North, North Carolina, Cross North School. And a lot of, particularly one in Cross North, they actually have a weaving program, and they make some beautiful things to sell, you know, blankets and uh, scarves and different things. If you're, you go up into North Carolina, and it's, it's the Blue Ridge Parkway, right, that so many people love to be on, you can get to Tomasi and Crossmore. We were actually coming through, I think back from the Biltmore House one time, and all of a sudden I saw a sign that said Crossmore, and I had never been to it. I said, whoa, wait a minute, that's DAR, let's pull over. My brother was driving, you know, pull over, and, and got to walk through. They have a beautiful chapel, uh, some beautiful windows, and can attest to that. Um, then there's also Hillside School up in Maine, Heinemann Settlement School in Heinemann, Kentucky, so a couple of them are close, and then Berry College in Mount Berry, Georgia. We also provide scholarships and funds, we as the DAR, to American Indian children in schools, including the Chimawa Indian School out in Salem, Oregon, and Bacone College in Oklahoma. So we do scholarships, we give money to help renovate, um, to actually go up and help with the kids at times, have birth, offer uh, supplies for birthday parties. We just do different things to help those kids. And then also, just in general, we try to promote education citizenship, and that's with the Children of the American Revolution, or CAR, the DAR Good Citizens, which is at the high school. I'm sure many times you've seen that. And the Junior American Citizens. We also have history essays, American history essay contests for young children. Summer camps, cultural programs that are offered through the DAR Museum. So, you know, if you're close to any of these things, make a point to see them, uh, especially the uh, headquarters up in Washington. Patriotism, again, we do volunteer work with our veterans, 
we try to send cards, care packages, just like a lot of you do in some of your different groups. Um, we try to promote, or we do promote, the Constitution. The DAR women actually were fundamental in starting Constitution Week celebration, which is October 17th through the 23rd every year. And we try to have different uh, things going on for that, <clears throat> events. Participate in naturalization ceremonies. And of course, down in Douglas, we don't have those, but I'm pretty sure in Atlanta, obviously they do, and I want to think maybe in Savannah, but I know they do in Atlanta. And this has become a little more personal to me because I have a daughter-in-law who's trying to get her citizenship right now. She is actually from South America, South Africa, not America, South Africa. Came over with her parents when she was 10 and has been on a visa for years and years. So we're anxious to see her get that, and it's amazing how much it costs. Really? It really does. <clears throat> we have things for the community. We try to do an outstanding veteran volunteer. <coughs> which we the DAR Good Citizen Awards, uh, the ROTC medals, we go out to the high school and with that each year, and then community service. So there's lots of things that can be done. Um, obviously, when you're a small group, we have between 30 and 35 people. You, cannot, you have to choose what you do, but that's true in anything. Just like with this museum, you have to choose what you can do, and we try to do as much as we can. Just a couple little things about do you know um, the DAR Hospital Corps certified 1,081 nurses for service during the Spanish-American War. DAR later funded pensions for many of those nurses because they did not qualify for government pension. After World War I, DAR funded reconstruction of the water system in a village in France and donated more than $130,000 for the support of 3,600 French war orphans. So lots of things have been done over the century. As a group, as a whole, we have a couple things that we try to go by. One of them is called the Chapter Achievement Awards. This comes down from National, and they just you just go through and check off things, of course, membership, but doing programs, doing activities in those areas we were ta I was talking about a while ago. And of course, just like anything else, they'd love to have your money. You can be a friend of American history, friend of genealogy, so forth and so on, friends of the DAR magazine, all for certain dollar amounts. But it also encourages you to um, help with a lot of the activities. We have a checklist under those, those three things, the historic, patriotic, and educational, like did we give to the DAR school? Um, there, did we do something for American history? Did we do um, a DAR good citizen? Have we done, sent money to the President General's project? You have like a group of ladies at the National, um, and they always have projects, but most of the time those are for the headquarters building, which obviously always has to be uh, kept up. And then we have the Georgia officers, and one of the main things that we do in Georgia is George Walton's home in Augusta. If you've not been there, I do have a handout here <clears throat> to give you some idea about that, but he was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence from Georgia. If you haven't seen that, do take time to go by. And then also just DAR, a little more about DAR. Um, we do, they do produce a magazine, a beautiful magazine. It's got many awards. It comes out monthly. Um, proceedings, you can read about what's happening in other, all the different chapters in Georgia, what happened at their state conference, just lots of things. We try to give out educational pamphlets, 
right, the black code. Know your rights under the Constitution. You're welcome to look at any of these. <clears throat> and the history of the American Revolution, some of the important battles, just lots of things. The schools, I have some information there. And you'll see up here uh, several of our members, including Gene Osteen, who was so good to bring this day. We make different um, posters to put in different places, like the library, the courthouse, things like that. And the schools. Now, our particular chapter was organized December the 5th. 1986 in Douglas at the home of organizing regent Miss Joseph H. Buxton. Joe Buxton was a teacher out of college and his wife was very interested in genealogy and helped start did all the paperwork for this. Miss Laureen Buxton, she worked in the post office out, out of the college. Other organizing members, Miss E.R. Bradley, of course, my mother, uh, Miss T.C. Clark, which would be um, Minnie Bell, Griffin Clark, um, Miss Hubbard, S.B. Hubbard Jr. was Mary, Lu Mary Lucille Ritchie, the Ritchie twins, Hubbard, uh, Miss S.O. Clevin, Billy Joe Ritchie Clevin, some of you know Karen. Her mom. Miss Gladys Herndon Knight, Miss Wileen Mitchell, Miss Webster Nail, who was um, principal, right, at um, Westside, I think, for a long time. Miss um, Flint Nichols, Joyce Nichols, uh, Miss Clara Overby Ritchie, Miss Ellis Stevens, that was uh, Miss Knight's daughter, and then her granddaughter, Miss Kimberly Stevens, and Catherine Stovall, who was a fixture here in the school system for a long, long time. And then within a month or two or three months, uh, Miss Elizabeth Mormon, Greg Lewis's mom, uh, Miss Beta Catherine Roberts, a lot of you know her, Miss Bobby Weeks, uh, Miss uh, Miriam. White, Eric White, taught it. They were both teachers. Uh, Miss Thomas Fryer, Doris Mosley Connor, Miss Doris, and uh, Miss Jeff Christopher, Donna Christopher. So these women started that first year, and of course, uh, I was one of those too. As you uh, get organized, you have to choose a name, of course, for your chapter. And they try to choose people who are important to the state that you're in. And our particular group uh, found Commodore Oliver Bowen. And said he was a patriot, a soldier, a sailor, a privateer. He's one of the few Georgians who did much for the cause of Americans' independence in the Revolutionary War. And he received very, excuse me, very little recognition. No other Georgian rose to the rank of Commodore of the Navy. So, he was actually born in Rhode Island, died at the age of 59. He's buried in St. Paul's Churchyard in Augusta, Georgia. He was a delegate to the Provincial Congress of Georgia, July 4, 1775. In December 1775, he took active part in the deliberations of the Council of Safety. But there were several other things. He had a schooner at the mouth of the Savannah River. He captured a British armed schooner, which was carrying many military supplies. So after that, he was commissioned for naval purposes. As we um, elected officers throughout the years, you have determined what activities you want to do. I have here the minutes for the first about 10 years, and they just tell, I mean, obviously, like any minutes would, um, you might want to thumb through it, but it does tell uh, 
when they actually started the first meeting, kept up with, of course, who attended. But just to start it off, the organizing meeting of the Commodore Oliver Bowen chapter in SDAR was held following luncheon Friday, December the 5th, 1986 at 12.30 p.m. The home is just uh, Joseph Buxton. With the organizing regent, Ms. Buxton, presiding and the secretary being present. That we kept up with. And then we do have a, we don't have scrapbooks for everything, unfortunately, because it does take somebody to put scrapbooks together. And ladies, you know how hard that can be. But we do have some put together for the first 10 years, and then I have a few more over there. If you'd like to look at any of those. There's lots of um, books that have been put out. One of them is A Century of Service, not our group, obviously, but A Century of Service, The Story of the DAR, which tells about the ladies who actually started it. And one of them, his last name was Lockwood. I always have to tell Charlie, you know, she may be kin to you, Mary Lockwood. <laughs> we always try to do things in the community. We try to talk about things that would be helpful, like a con uh, conservation tip. Our uh, regent right now is Deborah Patton. She's done a wonderful job putting together a little newsletter each time. Uh, things that are going on, something about the flag, um, something about veterans, what you can do for the DAR, things like that. <clears throat> Now, if you are interested in DAR, of course, a lot of this you can just go online, you know, www.dar.org. <clears throat> and basically the first step in any genealogy is finding out what you know. What can you document? You know, do you have documents for yourself and your family? And with, with the DAR, you have to document the first three generations with birth certificates, wedding certificates, death certificates, and you want to look at these things and see what names are on there because that's where it'll help put you in connection with the next generation. Um, they were saying, you know, always look for close relatives, but you got to be careful about close relatives and books that were written for a certain group, like Tanners or Smiths or whatever. And those, they usually have pretty correct information as far as somebody born, married, died, children, that kind of thing. But when they start talking about what so-and-so did, that may have been embellished to make it good reading. So you do, some things are not always taken has been the true facts. A lot of websites out there, Ancestry.com, FamilySearch.org, uh, many things that you can get some help with. FindMyPast.com, FamilySearch.org. One of the things they were saying that you've got to be careful when you're doing research is that when you're looking back into the late 19th or early 20th, 20, 20th century, um, the towns and counties that they say they're from may not exist anymore, may have been redone. Because aren't they always talking about redoing districts? And it's not necessarily county. But you know, as you drive through Coffee County from one end to the other, you'll see different other counties. Different counties have a little piece of into Coffee County. So when things, if you're looking for a person like that, a family or a person, they said sometimes you're going to have to go back to the next county. Of course, I'm not here to give you genealogy lesson. I'm probably not the best one for that. Um, the DAR has also, at the national level, done a lot of research now. Um, you can research African American patriots. They've got done a lot of work there trying to get um, books and documents for people. The uh, Spanish, Spanish patriots, because again, sometimes these people, uh, anybody that was around, not just 
those particular people, but anybody, you had to decide, were you going to be for the new America, Patriot, or were you going to go with England, and you almost didn't have a choice. You know, you had to back one or the other. So a lot of people then would have said, yes, we'll be on the side of Patriots. So you can go back and look that up. Also, Native American, because obviously we had a lot of Native Americans around that kicked out a lot of them. But a lot of research is there to help you, or researchable items. And then Jewish patriot. See, I would not have thought, well, why Jewish versus Italian or anybody else? But they have a big Jewish um, help, help, helpful hints there for finding a Jewish patriot. So lots of things, you know, nobody's excluded, but it does have to go back to a patriot uh, American Revolution. Obviously, visiting libraries, archives, courthouses, all those kind of things. Are any comments from my other members here from DAR? Anything you want to tell them about things we do? Or just in general? The National Continental Congress is this week in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see that happening online. They, they bring in speakers. Um, the people who are in these different contests or who have been put up for community service or uh, outstanding veteran or outstanding teacher, those, they go to the national level and they get their well, I guess what, compete at the national level too. And Jean, tell us about your sister. My sister has entered the uh, the art contest through, let's see, American Heritage has different art, different kinds of art contests, and hers was in painting and acrylic. And she got third place nationally. So uh, she flew up to Washington yesterday and was presented her ribbon and certificate. And she's on her way back home today. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it very much.